Hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show, part two of our lighthouse build. Well, last week on the show, we started our garden lighthouse build and we made some great progress, but there's still quite a bit more to go. So I don't want to talk too much. So without further ado, let's get into the project. Now we need to cut some pieces for our little house or our entryway at the front of our lighthouse. Now using some of the off cuts from the piece of three quarter inch ply, I'm going to make the front foyer or the entrance of the lighthouse. So I've cut a couple of pieces that are seven inches long by three and three quarter inches wide. Then I have taken a piece that is six inches wide and at seven inches up from the bottom, I've 45 inside to each corner. And then I've cut a couple pieces that are five inches wide. One of them is five and three quarters inch long. And the other one is five inches long. And that will form our peaked roof of our entryway. So at this point, I'm just going to glue my little foyer together. Well, with this piece now glued together, we're going to give all of our pieces a thorough sanding at this point. I don't think you need a video of it. I'm pretty sure you know how to sand by now. So I'll see you when I get that done. Well, I now have these six little blocks of three quarter inch plywood. They are an inch and a half wide and two and a half inches long and I have angled the top edge at six degrees. Now this higher side here is actually the inside, the side that will be closest to our lighthouse. And all I'm gonna do, I just have this old electrical cover that I'm going to use. You can see how technical this is. I'm going to take this old electrical cover and I'm gonna mark this round over here and I'm going to take these over to the scroll saw and cut them out and these will be the braces that will hold the uh, one of the levels or at least a, a design accent piece. So let me get these cut and I will take you over to the lighthouse to show you where they go. And there we have our six pieces done. Now these six pieces eventually will just fit underneath the lip here of our 13 inch disc between our main tapered body and the disc directly on top of it. It's just an accent piece. They're not necessary, but it just gives it that little extra look. We now need to mark for our fence posts. So what I'm going to do for starters is I'm going to place a center line on here because we need to mark a hexagon. Now just like we did before when marking for our hexagons, we're going to set our compass up. We want to have it so that it's one inch in from the outer edge of our circle. And then using our same method, we will just mark our intersecting points. And now we can center punch for all of our six fence posts as they will coincide with each corner of our hexagon. So we can center punch those and then we need to get our fence posts ready. With the holes marked for our fence, fence posts, we now need to make them. So what I have is a 5 8 by 5 8 piece of maple chucked up in the lathe. It's six inches long, but that is overkill. That is too much for what we need. But what I'm going to do is in one end, about an inch in, I'm going to turn a round spot there and I'm going to make it 3 8 of an inch in diameter. And 
with one done, I will now turn five more. We will now cut each individual fence post so that this little turn three eighths section here is only five eighths of an inch long. And now we will cut each post so that the flat section is three inches long. Well, what I've done on each fence post is I've put a 45 chamfer, just a small one at the end. Uh, I did that over at the table saw, rotating it 90 degrees each time and just taking a little skim off the edge. I just think it cleans it up a little better. I've also drilled a 3 16th diameter hole, a through hole in each one on one side and it is a half an inch down from the top and the other one is two inches down from the top. As well, the punch, or the holes that we center punched here, we have drilled a 3 8 diameter hole that is 5 8 of an inch deep and that will house all of our fence posts. Eventually they'll get glued in, but at the moment they're not going to because we still need to paint. Now in between each one of those holes, it won't actually get done until the final assembly, but I'll give you an idea of what we're looking at here. In each one, we're going to take some paracord. I'm not sure of the color just yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to do red, white, maybe black. I'm not 100% certain. But we will be creating kind of a fence or some railings with this paracord all the way around our fence posts. So I'm just going to install this just temporarily and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get that done. So eventually you will end up with something like this. Now, of course, you can change this up however you like, but this is what I've come up with and I think it'll be uh, fine. I don't know if I'm going to use the red paracord or not. I think it's all going to depend on how it looks after it's painted. Well, you may be wondering what we're going to use for a light and it's something very simple and all it is is a LED solar garden light. Uh, I picked it up at one of the big box stores and of course it's solar powered so it will charge itself and then when the lights go out it will illuminate. I don't know if the camera is showing you that or not but it will illuminate. Well at this point in time the build is pretty much done. Um, what we need to do though is paint this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a couple coats of primer, then I'm going to paint it the colors I want. You can use your imagination as to how you want to paint yours. Then we'll assemble it. Um, the pieces, the sections just screw together, but I'll show you how that goes when we're done painting. So for now, we're gonna paint this up. You want to take the time to now, here's a chance to use your imagination, add some accessories, add some windows, add a door, add whatever you like. If you want another couple railings, whatever you wish, add what you want to your lighthouse and paint it up as you go. And when you're all said and done, I'll see you back here for the assembly. Well, with all of the painting finally done and all of my little accents made and painted, it's time to assemble this lighthouse. And the first thing that I'm going to install will be the entrance way onto the front of the base of our uh, unit. So you just want to line it up. We're going to get it centered. I'm going to mark where, we're, where we want to install it and I will be drilling holes into our base here and then from the inside I'll be using some two inch screws to screw our entrance house onto the front. Now throughout this assembly you're going to see parts on my lighthouse that look like this and that's ugly as sin but don't worry about it because there are accent pieces 
that get installed on here to fix this up. So don't look at it and think, oh my goodness, what's Kenny doing? We're getting there. I'll go all through all that a little bit later. So the next thing that we need to install is our larger circle that will be the next section of our base. But before I go through that, I just want to turn our attention to the back panel. And this is the entry hole for where I will mount it. All I've done is use uh, an old piano hinge that I had in the shop. And I actually had one of these barrel locks here. Um, that's just to prevent people from getting in and loosening this and taking my lighthouse. But that's how I've installed our entry door to access our mounting hardware. So let's get this larger disc installed and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Well, I've now placed our 22 inch disc on top of our base and you need to install it so that on each flat in the middle, it will overhang two inches at each point. And then what I've done is I've taken some chalk and I have outlined, I don't know if we can see that, but I have outlined that octagon, or sorry, the hexagon. And all I'm going to do is put it in place using these chalk lines now as my guide. We'll put a little bit of adhesive on here to help to glue it down and I'll clamp it. And then we're gonna shoot some brad nails down in through inside these marks so that we get it firmly secured to our base. Now, in case you're wondering what I used for adhesive here, some simple clear silicone of nice thin bead all the way around. It will act as not only an adhesive between the two levels, but also as a gasket. So once we get all of this nailed down, it's now time to install our tapered tower on. Well, in order to get our upright mounted to our base, I'm going to align it the best I can, measuring, making sure it's centered all the way around on our 22 inch circle. And then I'm going to reach inside through that back access panel and I'm going to use some two inch number eight screws and we're going to screw right up through that panel and into our hexagon base that we installed in the bottom of our upright. Well, I've now attached our next size circle to our smaller hexagon, all I've done, same method, a little bit of clear silicone and then some nails up through the bottom. We're now just going to place this on the top of our lighthouse. We're going to align it the way that we like it and it will be secured again with clear silicone and then a screw, two inch, straight down through the middle that will screw it right into the top of our tapered section. Well, we're now going to install our fence posts. And for that, we're just gonna use a little bit of wood glue here into our hole because we did not paint the inside of these holes. So a little bit of wood glue in there. And then we're going to mount our fence posts. Now you want to remember that the holes that you drilled have to go around the perimeter here. So just make sure that you're putting them in with the holes oriented the right way. So I'm gonna glue all of these in all the way around this next platform and then I'll see you when I get that done. And with those done, the last thing to do is to put our top piece on with our light fixture. And then my friends, my lighthouse or our lighthouse is done. And there you have it. A garden lighthouse. Guys, there are a few things for this project that you'll have to figure out on your own. For starters, how you want to mount the light at the top. Now for mine, I had that garden light which worked great, but it was a little too small for my liking. It looked out of place up there. So what I did was built another layer on top of the last one that I showed you how to cut and I ended up painting the um, solar light 
and kind of making a custom top there. As well, the windows. I put in little window ledges, uh, cutting them to the slope of our uh, taper, but as well, I cut it a little more so that there would be a slight downward slope on my window sills to uh, make it so that they don't collect any rainwater there. Um, as well, I added the windows. And something simple, I just cut a piece of quarter inch thick maple on the scroll saw and painted the background on our tapered section uh, black for the inside of the window. And I scrolled out a little window and mounted them with brass screws. The door is done the exact same way, uh, except to emulate, or sorry, just simulate a, a doorknob, I used a brass washer and a brass screw to screw in in place there. You may be wondering why I just didn't use adhesive to mount the windows and the door. Well, the thing is, is that I think that those are going to be the first to warp and eventually uh, be just an eyesore. So I didn't want them glued on there so I could easily replace them should the need arise. I could just remove the four brass screws, install a new cut and painted window, and away I go. So the railing is just black paracord that I've strung through the holes that we drilled in our posts and then joined it at the back using a little bit of electrical heat shrink tubing. Pretty simple stuff. So what I did for my mounting in the garden is I made a plywood form that would conform to the shape of my lighthouse and then from there I just poured in some concrete and sunk some threaded rod into it. The threaded rod positions will coincide with those holes that we drilled in the ring at the base. And then I can just reach in that back access door and tighten it down and with some nuts on those uh, threaded rods, I'll lock the door so that nobody can remove it and it's good to go. Guys, this project lends itself to a lot for your imagination. Now, I went pretty simplistic on this and you can too if you like. But, I mean, you could go so far as to cut actual windows, put a light inside so that the windows light up. You could have doors that open if you wish. You could, basically, the sky is the limit. You could have inside a spiral staircase, thanks for the idea, Richard, all the way around the inside that would be seen through the windows. Guys, the sky is the limit, and all you need to do is use your imagination. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in to this show today. Uh, this project has been a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I've got a bit of an obsession with these lighthouses whenever I go to the east coast of Canada. And now I have a piece of them right there in my own yard that I can look at whenever I feel like. If these measurements don't suit you guys, this is about a four and a half foot high lighthouse. If you would like a smaller one, of course, adjust the measurements. It's not that big of a deal. The process that I've shown you with the angles and the tapers, it is all the same. So have fun with it. Adjust it to suit your needs. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. This has been a lot of fun. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I really hope you've enjoyed it. I also hope that you're going to try this one for yourself. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.